I'm going fossil hunting at Lyme Regis today. I'm going collecting to the east of Lyme Regis along the Jurassic Coast at low tide. Here are some marbles and musket balls from the old Victorian bottled up. Here's a whole other range of oddities, curiosities I've found on the beach over the course of time. It's a very stormy period of time. Mary Anning would have been out in all that weather, fossil hunting, finding her curiosities, they called them in those days. Even our garden here is totally flooded. Some big stormy waves from the east and it's really scoured deep here along this old breakwater. You can still see some of the remnants of a landslip down here. tide has started to lower, so it's a good time to see what the sea has revealed, to see what the sea has washed out fossil-wise as I walk down towards the East Beach Lyme Regis on the 2008 landslip I'll be hunting on. Here up on the board is the old iconic picture of Mary Anning, the famous fossil lady of Lyme Regis with a little dog called Trey. Trey got sadly squashed on a landslide and there's her shell basket as well hitched on her arm with her hickory handled hammer to break the right rocks with. Hopefully we'll find some of the right splitting rocks today as I go down along the beach. The layered rocks, the small grey layered rocks that split like slate. So I'm going to head down along the Jurassic Coast, following in Mary Anning's footsteps. The Jurassic Coast was given World Heritage status. It's a fantastic area to behold, with these lovely marine sediments you can see down here in the distance, were formed down near the equator over 190 million years ago. You can see those layers in the cliffs, the old quarrymen used to point out to the scientific community these layers and they would say in their Dorset accent look at the liars and so it sounded like liars l-i-a-s and they're just trying to say look at the layers and uh, so it's written up as the blue lias the 190 million year old limestone beds from the Jurassic Well, someone's cleverly propped that sign that's fallen down onto the coastline up on the cliffs. It's a good thing to do because people will see it there and recognize that the cliffs are very dangerous, hopefully. So many people you see underneath the cliffs, especially during Easter and holiday times when they come down and don't know otherwise very much better and uh, they should be warmed constantly to stay away from the dangerous cliffs. They're liable to fall suddenly and without warning along the Jurassic Coast. Well, I'm walking along, stooped over, looking in the iron pyrite on the beach, trying to find the small ammonites preserved in fool's gold. And uh, there on the beach too is a very flattened ammonite, just there, can you see that in front of me? It's one that's not preserved very well. The ammonites are often three-dimensional, the Promicrocerus specimens, but a lot of the time you get those flattened ammonites that are not preserved so well. I'm walking along stooped over, getting my eyes really close to the ground. There's a lot of kids that go along and find fossils a lot better than I do. They've got better eyesight, they're close to the ground, and they've got that kind of energy that kids have to run around find those little ammonites washing out at low tide. Also too, there's some interesting material coming off the old Victorian bottle dump. I'm mistaken that for a 
backbone, like an Yggdrasil backbone, but it's just the sort of end of a, a bottle, that piece. And also to here, I thought that was a little like mini dinosaur, plastic dinosaur even on the beach, but some kind of pottery creation from the old Victorian bottle dump, washed down onto the beach. And uh, that's an oddment, a uh, curiosity. I'll take that back just for fun. Uh, it's a bit worse for wear with all the erosion, like a lot of the stuff. If you don't find it quickly, the sea will take it. Look at this marble, it's broken in half. Here's a handful of the nice beach glass, the material you find on the 2008 slip, washing out daily. Best to look for the material at low tide when the sea's done the work for you. My Empire IT is fool's gold. Let's get right in close. I'm always searching in the fool's gold patches on the beach, the iron pyrites, the heavy concentrations. The ammonites are preserved in fool's gold. They're heavy. And also too, bits of metal all get concentrated in the same sort of areas on the beach. Ah, now there you go. Nice one there in that pocket, look at that. More iron pyrites, but this one's been shoved up on the side. Wow, that'll clean up nicely. Well, I'm quite far down the beach now. I've passed over the 2008 slip at Lyme Regis, east of Lyme Regis, and I'm hunting here amongst the iron pyrites, the fool's gold on the beach. You can see an ammonite preserved in false gold, just there. In amongst the heavy concentrations on the beach, the iron pyrites. That's quite a nice golden ammonite from the Jurassic. I can see another one over here. Little baby one, oh, it's broken by the sea's action. Coming in, battering it around. You can see it's broken the edge off that one. Nice little fossil from the Jurassic Age. Let's have a look in amongst the pyrites here, see if I can find anything else. I've got quite a good pocket full of the sea glass, which I'll show you. Nice bit of color. And uh, that is uh, something you can find more and more of as the sea washes into the 2008 Lime Regis landslide. And there is a really old, area of glass comes down on the beach the Victorian bottle dump was in there and all sorts of mixture of stuff coming down onto the beach in that area well it's good to get a nice little collection of these ammonites preserved in iron pyrite together just milling in and out of the rocks well, there you go, X marks the spot. And if you have a look here, I've got one of the nodules in the mud, washing out of the mud slides. And uh, got this hammer here to uh, try and get that out. That's what I'm looking for. Some of the little calcite ammonites in that material on the beach. So, here I go with this piece, I'll try and dig it out a bit. I'll show you a bit later when I've dug it right out of the muddy mudslide. Nice big nodule here, give it a crack with a hammer. Looks like a wood stone there. You see one already there in the piece protruding out. It's quite good this. Woodstone, if it is one, not 
absolutely sure. It might be an intermediate nodule. Let's give it a sharp tap. There seems to be one or two in there. Probably a bit of a zip sticking out. Let's give it a good hit with the cleave end of the hammer right through this flat face. Spray, split it nicely. Another little one on the outer edge there. there. Seems to be a bigger one there. Let's cleave past that. Create another flat face with the cleave end of the hammer. I'm going to hit through the rock to that one. That was worth popping out of the rock. You can see that one preserved in calcite. Very nice one from the Jurassic Age. Let's have a further tap at the rock, see what we got in it. Seems to be something quite big there. Seems to be a bit of an edge there, or something sticking out. I think I might take that home for further preparation stakes. Still got a nice layered piece of the rock there. And there's one that's popped out of the material. You can see. that one split right through it. I've sectioned it. Showing you the structure of the ammonite inside. You can see the uh, chambers of the creature that filled with water gas there, preserved in white calcite there. I've just noticed this dendritic pattern on top of the rock, top of this chert bed. Quite a lovely, odd piece to have a look at. Well, I can see the back of an ammonite, the keel of an ammonite protruding out down there. Let's see how that, ah, uh, it's just a piece of one. That one's worse for wear. There's quite a bit of iron pyrites, the fool's gold around this spot. There's a bit of the crystalline cubic Iron pyrite, a bit of limonite on the outside. Fun for the kids to find. And along the Jurassic coast at low tide, there's always a lot of ammonites just on top of the rock for everyone to see. That one's covered in iron pyrites. Well, I've been following in Mary Anning's footsteps today. She was the famous fossil lady of Lyme Regis, 1799 to 1847. She found the most amazing fossil finds. And yet, at the end of her life, she said everyone had racked her brains, stolen her ideas and given no credit. She did the most amazing annotated sketches of fossils. I found an ichthyosaur paddle and I used her annotated sketches to put that fossil find back together. The morphology of the paddle was written up really nicely, succinctly by Mary Anning and I really enjoyed doing that work on the paddle. I'll show you that in future fossil finding videos that I do. But as for today, I haven't drawn a blank. I found that really nice calcite ammonite but obviously in this rough weather I'd like to find more fossils washing out. But you never know each day what luck will bring. And it's all about luck. After the storms have washed material out onto the beaches to see what you'll get, to see what fossil your name is on, on any given day. A really big chunk of an ammonite there. Probably Areotites bucklandi, the species. Some iron pyrites and some small ammonites there, preserved in the hollow chambers of the creature. Some small ammonites in section.
Well, here by the old sea wall is a big lump of lava kite rock. This Norwegian rock costing not very much. In Norway, they have lots of this granitic rock and it makes good sea defense material. It's out at the end of the cob. They put the lava kite at the end of the historic cob to break up the big seas. But some of it used to be used as ships ballast. And so the old sail ships used to dump off the lava kite here. And that's why you find some unusual small bits on the beach at times. With the sea getting rougher and the tide rising, it's time to leave the beach now with my fossil finds. I'm heading for home. Mary Anning would have left the beach with the curiosity she collected and swiftly headed back into Lyme Regis. Denise Dutton has been commissioned to sculpt the statue of Mary Anning. This is the maquette she made of the famous fossil lady. Have a look at Mary Anning rocks. They wish to help the next generation of earth scientists to follow in Mary Anning's footsteps.